Hi everyone, Josh Henschke here with the Michigan Insider on 24-7 Sports, here with Sam Webb, publisher of the Michigan Insider. Um, just uh, a couple of minutes removed from, you know, interviewing the man himself, the man of the hour, uh, John Beeline, just announced on Wednesday that he'd come back uh, to, to Ann Arbor to finish out his career as, a, as the head coach. Um, you know, just a few minutes removed, you've had some time to, to kind of reflect on what he said. He said a lot, there's a lot to unpack yeah. there. Um, I guess what were your first initial thoughts on, on everything? You know, that it, it confirmed uh, what we had heard already, that he was genuinely interested. They were genuinely interested in him. Uh, he was he was surprised when it got out because he had conducted this behind the scenes uh, in secret yeah. uh, for, for so long, for weeks, obviously. So when it came out, uh, it was a surprise to everyone. He, you know, he didn't even tell all his kids. Uh, his assistants didn't know. Uh, so, you know, it, but it confirmed that the interest was, was, was both ways. And that, you know, he wanted to, he wanted to, the, the challenge of it. He wanted to explore the, the challenge of it. That was what was appealing to him. And what made the Pistons, uh, you know, specifically appealing is that he wouldn't have to move. I mean, you know, he's moved his wife nine times, he said. Uh, you know, he's grandkids that, that they're around. They love Ann Arbor. He has a home up at Wildoon Lake. He doesn't want to pick up and move again. Right. And so that would have afforded him the opportunity to explore the challenge of the NBA because he is, he, he might be a self deprecating guy, which he he absolutely is. He does not like all this attention being on his, on, on his decisions. Like, ah, oh, it's no big deal. Obviously, we know it is. Uh, but confidence, oh, he, they, there's no shortage of confidence. John Beeline is immensely confident in his coaching ability and, and his system and its ability to work at that level. He, and he wanted to show that. He wanted to explore the idea of showing that. At the end of the day, uh, you know, the legacy that he has already established here at Michigan, the legacy that he could further here at Michigan, and then, the, you know, it's another thing that he said, look, it's not like they came and offered me the job either. Right. So, you know, short of, short of them saying that, why would you even consider it further when you have a great situation and one that could potentially be, you know, be compromised some by carrying this on more or longer publicly? So decide to pull out, stay at Michigan because this is where he wants to be. You know, the thing I found most interesting, too, is that, you know, just how, I guess, how open he was about the whole process to you. Um, you know, even going as far as mentioning, hey, I called Brad Stevens and, and Billy Donovan, and, and you know, they, they told me that, you know, it's hard work in the NBA, but it's not going to be as hard work as what you're dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of raw, sincere honesty kind of humanized the whole, whole thing and, and really just kind of... You know, showed just how much he was serious about this, and this is not just something that you know people who have said that you know he's kind of jockeying for you know a contract extension and, and more money for whatever. But you know, moving on to you mentioned legacy. You know, there there was a head coach once upon a time who did something kind of similar. Uh, you mentioned that to him uh, to yeah. John today, and and he kind of didn't want to go down that route, but he didn't. it's a very um, a very Bo Bo Schembechler esque. Uh, move that he did. I don't think there's any question. I mean, for Beeline, he would, he first thing he would do is, I'm so far, I'm, I'm, I'm so far below Bo. That's the first thing he would say. Second thing he would say is, they didn't, the Pistons didn't offer me, the, hadn't offered me the job yet, whereas Bo had been offered. But that, all of that is beside the point. He could have continued to run this race. And who knows? Uh, even if he wasn't the Pistons' number one guy right now, that's, that's not, to, there's nothing that says that they don't land on him. Uh, eventually, as this process goes on, maybe he becomes mm -hmm. their number one guy, or maybe the guy who's their number one guy decides to pass and it lands on Beeline. You don't know that. Mm -hmm. So he put that to the side and said, I want to stay at Michigan. That is turning down the prospect of something else, yep. of something more, of something in, in some people might consider it. If you talk about Billy Donovan and, and Brad Stevens, they might consider, they might consider it better. Because you, you actually have an off season. You have a, a life away from, uh, from the job. Uh, so, you know, he turned that down. And it, to me, it was a Bo Schembechler moment. It's Bo in 1982 turning down a very lucrative kind. He's making $60,000 a year as a University of Michigan head football coach. 
and they come in, A&M comes in with a million dollar deal at 250,000 per, 250,000 per season. That is huge, four times the salary. And he turns it down because he's, there are things more important to me than money. One of those things is Michigan. There are things more important to John Beeline than exploring the NBA, having more of, a, of an off season and life away from the sport, maybe, maybe you know more money we'll see what the what the renegotiated contract comes out to but it's more important for me to further things here at michigan that's a legacy moment that's that's a moment in the history because he's already the best basketball coach michigan has ever had now you, you you start to work on that that iconic legacy that transcends a school you you talk about bo schenbecker yeah he's a great michigan coach but he's a great college football coach one of the best in history that's where you start to deal when you talk about John Beeline, Hall of Fame and that type of stuff. This type of moment furthers that. So now we've got this behind us. You know, what's next for Michigan? Obviously, Beeline mentioned the five-man class he's got coming in. He didn't want to abandon those guys. Um, extremely talented five-man class, by the way. Right. Um, you know, obviously looking to be one of the, better, uh, the best teams in the Big Ten coming in. Maybe not a um, national championship contender, but, you know, where do you see, now that Beeline's returning and, and appear to be returning for good, you know, where do you see this kind yeah. of heading for well, this program? Well, he's, he, John Beeline has made the Michigan basketball program the top performing program in the Big Ten. And, I mean, the, I don't care what measure you use, whether it's championships, uh, you know, conference championships, NCAA tournament runs, draft picks, he has them all. He's beating everyone in, league, in the league in that since 2013. You look at with Charles Matthews coming back, I think Michigan's the favorite in the Big Ten this year. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to put a ceiling on what they could do in the postseason. I know you aren't, but I'm, I'm with you. You can't, you can't right now project them to be a Final Four team, but they have a great freshman class coming in. Absolutely. Depending on how those guys develop, and because Beeline said, you know, we got seven guys coming back. We got a five-man class. Some of those guys are going to have to play if you're going to play nine, ten Absolutely. guys. So... You know, depending on how those three guys contribute, you know, this team, maybe this team does become one that can make a run. But if they don't, if it's a Big Ten championship year and a Sweet 16 year, that's still really good. But the next couple of years, Josh, and we'll get into this when we talk about recruiting, yep. it's really being set up for the for the 2020, uh, you know, NCAA tournament year. For that maybe being a deep run. And if he closes out this current recruiting class, uh, the you know 2019 recruiting class uh, and adds to Jalen Wilson in the way that we think he can. We could be talking about 2020, 2021, 2022. He could be you know they're poised to be consistently competing at a national championship level. That's that's what they're cusping on right now here with John Beeline at the helm. All right, well, that'll do it for us at the WTK Studios. Uh, for more coverage on Michigan football and basketball, head to themichiganinsider.com.